A portion of this video is sponsored by Google. Hello, I'm Gav. In this video, we're gonna be using slow-mo to see what happens when you shatter a wine glass using nothing but sound. We're gonna find out the resonant frequency of this glass. Sounds like that. We're gonna play that sound extremely loudly at the glass until hopefully it gives up on life and shatters all over the place. Behind me is an extremely fast phantom, a bright light, and a very loud speaker. That's all we need. Let's crack on. Crack on. My phone has no headphone jack, so I've wheeled out this old busted iPad, which is running a tone generator app. We'll find the frequency and we'll play this through this amp into this two inch compression driver with a little bit of PVC on the end, which as you can see, I've botched the saw job, but it should be enough to focus the sound nicely into the side there. Backlighting it with this bad boy and filming it with the Phantom TMX 7510, a very fast new camera, and we'll be starting out at 82,000 frames a second at 720p. Aim the monitor towards me so I can see what I'm looking at. Need some safety goggles and some muffs. Did you see that? The light just died, that was it. <laughs> I was like, Less than a minute away from filming that. Okay, this light is on its last legs, I think. Maybe too much glitter. First, I'm gonna use this piece of paper just to see if I'm getting close. One of two things will happen here. The glass will break, or the speaker will. <laughs> yeah, about that seems to be good. I'm gonna take this out. Let's crank it, 504 hertz. Wow, just blew off the back. Blimey. It was, I could see it with my eyes how much it was warping there. That was nuts. Just exploded, didn't it? Oh, look at the bend. It just looks like liquid. Be interesting to see where the break starts. Will it be near the stem or near the top? Very much doubt it would start randomly in the middle. It's gonna be at a point of weakness. Oh, oh! Seemed to be right at the front there. Wow. Still extremely fast. Even at 82,000 frames a second, that was fast. Yeah, absolutely, and then it changes the resonant frequency. It's no longer vibrating because it's not the right shape anymore. Okay, so that was very cool. And I think now I want to either increase the speed and go closer, or perhaps film it from above, I'm trying to decide what I want to do first. I think we'll go for a faster speed. So we'll get rid of that one to find the frequency of this one. They're all slightly different. Um, all the ones from the same box seem to be very similar, sort of between 500 and 510 hertz. But we'll find that doing the uh, little paper trick. You also can play the sound into uh, your phone and there's apps that will tell you the frequency. So now in order to increase our speed, I've had to massively reduce the vertical resolution. So it's now only 320 pixels high, which is unfortunate for this subject because it's a tall one, not a wide one, which means the left and the right of frame are a complete waste and the top and the bottom are missing. What we really need is for our subject to be this way on the sensor, not this way. And there's a very advanced method you can use with these cameras to do that. And that is turning the camera on its side and filming it that way. <laughs> so we'll do that now. It's now basically the world's fastest TikTok camera. Okay, so now we are making much better use of the sensor. Just skimming the sides here, and we are at 187,000 frames a second with a two and a half microsecond exposure. Okay, 506 seems pretty good. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, absolutely bizarre thing happened there. The vibrations from the speaker caused the trigger button to slip off the table. <laughs> and trigger the camera right as the glass broke. So we only have the very beginning of this glass crack. This one's a bit more foggy looking.
Uh-oh. <laughs> That's an uh-oh. <laughs> All right, this glass is stubborn um, and it's blown this. So I'm just gonna put a new coil in here. Unfortunate. Okay, we should be good again. Just a complete explosion. Oh, it went from the bottom. Wow. Oh, it's just so interesting. Like once it started cracking, all the new branches that start. At this speed, we're slowing down one second to over two hours. It really does show you how fast the cracks are when moments later, and by moments I mean, you know, thousandths of a second later, it just looks paused. Every, or the glass actually spreading out in the air is so much slower than the cracks moving through the glass. And you can actually still see, even in the pieces that have come apart, they still carry that frequency that they were vibrating at just a few thousandths of a second ago. You still see the wobble. Very cool. Oh, I really like that one. I've seen this done many times before and I've seen it in slow-mo before. It's actually a classic subject to shoot in slow-mo. I've never seen it this slow though. It's very interesting. All right, I've got to stop watching it. We'll be here all day. So you want to try this one with liquid in just so I can film the surface and see what the liquid does. Maybe get some cool shapes. It won't break the thing because the glass won't be able to warp in the same way, but it might be interesting to film. This looks very similar to the video we did on the Chinese spouting bowl from a few years ago. This is the part of the video that is sponsored by Google. However, there is more slow-mo at the end, if you'd like to stay tuned. I use the internet all the time to find out information or just to seek out the answers to questions I have at 2 a.m. But sometimes it's difficult to figure out which information is useful and which is a load of old bo Google is really committed to putting the highest quality information first. And Google search has some great features to help you assess just how reliable the information that you're reading is. But it's still important to think very critically about the way we use the internet, especially with regards to information. In the recent years, I've been very interested in renewable energy, potentially even thinking about investing in solar power. However, there is so much misinformation out there in regards to renewable energy. And that's why it's so important when you or I are searching online that we try not to take the truth of search results for granted and instead try and understand all the information for ourselves. Using my interest in solar energy as an example, a lot of the time it's important how you phrase a question when searching online. For example, how much money will solar save me may skew the results and you won't actually know or learn about the subject in general. So a better phrasing of that question might be pros and cons of solar panels. Then you're more likely to find results where both sides are presented and you actually get the whole picture instead of straight down one path. And that's it really, just a little PSA there from Google, but a very important one. And I feel like that mindset will continue to get even more important as time goes on and technology gets more advanced. Big thanks to Google for sponsoring that segment. Now we'll return to the action because I haven't broken everything in this video yet. Let's continue. Okay, I've moved the set up to the floor. We're now looking straight down at the rim of the glass. So much stress. Why did it break that time? Oh, at the bottom again. <laughs> Back at 187,000 frames a second. I'm 
just love the way the frequency causes that wonderful sort of top to bottom squish mm -hmm. and then left to right squish immediately after, back and forth. It really gives you a sense of time between the flexes. Because this one cracks at the bottom, there's enough time for all of the movement at the top to transfer from a side to side smush to a top to bottom smush. And that's all while the crack is traveling up. So you actually still get the continued flex of the rim of the glass, even though the bottom of the glass has catastrophically failed. Whoops. Well, there we have it. Some immensely slow footage of a classic science experiment. Very interesting to see it so much slower than I've seen it before. And I've blown up my final voice coil. I just started firing smoke all over the room, which was pretty funny. And we've devastated several wine glasses. Make sure you subscribe if you like slow-mo. That's what we're all about. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. I missed the bucket.